the things I've always tried to do is bring in young people that can, even when we didn't have any young people, that can help us to, yeah, stay young and find some new ways forward. And together we've mentored, I didn't really count them, but at least a dozen young people who've come here and provided some leadership for six months or a year, and probably probably more than that. But one of the great privileges has been Nate. When Nate signed up to come for an exchange program and he stayed, and then later I saw, visited him in Ohio, I was in the States, I said, look, man, why don't you come back? And I still remember that Ethan, the first time I met Ethan was yesterday. And I said, Ethan, okay, we already had set it up, but so it wasn't a trick, but... He played the guitar, it's fantastic, and he and his wife are going to be leading. The first time I met Ethan, uh, Nate, Nathan, because I call him Nathan, right? The first time I met Nathan, the guy that introduced us said, Nate plays a little guitar. And I said, really? We need some help with the music. We had nothing, we were using videos for like a year, just videos for music. We had no musicians that were playing. I said, Nate, you play a little guitar? He said, yeah, a little bit. And so, you know, the rest is history. And so it's great to have his dad, Tim, here with us. And Tim does some unusual things. And Gina shared last week and does some unusual things. (laughs) And a great family and some of the family and friends here. So, Tim, um, just share what what we talked about, what's on your heart. And it's good to have you here. And thanks for both of you, all of you, for... um, allowing Nate to share in our lives these past years and looking forward to the ones ahead. So thank you for that setup. So you're here to hear about the weird family, right? <laughs> the unique family. But I guess it, that is a good way to describe us. But uh, your pastor, Nate, talked me into speaking to you today. So um, I'm happy to be here and happy to share with you uh, some of the story of how God has been working in my life to help me to grow closer to him. And part of that is traveling to the country of the Central African Republic. But also I want to share with you this morning about the ministry that I have with my family and just people I work with, or people all around us. So kind of the title of what I want to share this morning is called Ministry is a Lifestyle. Um, so the idea is that God wants us, God wants our heart to be involved in ministry everywhere. And so sometimes, but for me, in my story, it was important for me to step out in faith to go to another country. So I will share some of that this morning with you. I'm not a pastor, (laughs) and you probably tell when I speak, but uh, in case you do not like what I say, I brought a lot of good pictures that will be shown. So (laughs) you can enjoy that. Um, but I believe that if God can use me and my story, he can use you and your story to do his work anywhere in the world. So uh, to start out this morning, I want us to uh, look at the passage of Romans 12, 1 through 8. And you can read with along with me. Therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. 
We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So there are a lot of things that we can learn from that passage. But I want to highlight just a few of the ideas that go along with my story. So the first thing is to offer to God your whole life. So as you might learn, Jesus gave his entire life for us, right? And so this is our opportunity to give our whole life to him, not just on Sunday, but every day. Um, you know, and so we want to develop the idea that we sh- I shared of ministry is a lifestyle, not just an event or service. So it's a little different idea. God is concerned about our heart, not just our activities. So he does not want us to be only busy. He wants to know why we're doing those things. Are we doing them for ourselves or are we doing it for God? So that is something, another thing we can learn. He also wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So how do we do that? Uh, we list here, and these are some of the things that God has used in my life to help with the story that you're going to hear. It's to develop a daily time to read and study the Bible. It doesn't have to be a sermon. You can just read it and, and just continue to read it. And if you're like me, you will not understand it all. But you keep reading. And then you can come to the church or you can come to someone who can help teach and help understand. And you continue to grow just as a child. You go to school and you continue to learn as you get older to become more, to have more information. Uh, the second important thing is to develop a daily time to pray. We believe as Christians that we have a relationship with Jesus. And so if you're in a relationship, you enjoy talking to the person you're in a relationship with, right? Uh, If you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you usually want to talk to them, right? (laughs) Or be on your phone talking to them. So God is the same way. He wants us to communicate with him. So prayer allows us just to talk to him, to share our thoughts with him, our ideas. And I just put here, it takes time. This won't happen one day. <laughs> you know, to develop a habit is very difficult. And for me in my life, it was not an easy thing either. But a friend of mine shared the idea that if you have um, gotten out of the habit of spending time with God in prayer or in devotions, he said, that's okay. Just start tomorrow. So if you've struggled, you just start again. Just continue to to try until it sticks or until you continue to do it. So it's a process. It takes time. You know, God, God is, sorry, God has a lot of time, right? He's been around for a long time. So he's, he's patient. Uh, and, and he's been patient with me. So moving on here. So number five is a renewed mind. Combined with offering yourself to God leads to maturity. Just want to point out the word, couple words there of offering yourself. It's not forced. God is wanting you to offer yourself. So if you give a gift to someone, you hand them a gift, right? So that's what God is wanting us to do is to give ourselves to Him as a gift. Not because we have to, but because we want to. And so that we also understand that, I want you to understand that uh, all of us are a valuable member of God's body, the body of Christ. So as the verses mentioned, that we each have different gifts, just like my hands 
have different functions than my head or my feet. But we each have an important part of the body. And so each of you have that same part. Sometimes we have to learn what that is or learn how we can help. But that's part of the process. So that's where number seven, to, uh, to identify and utilize your gifts and talents to serve God and others. So this was important for me because I identified some of my skills, what I thought I had skills, and in my mind, I did not think they matched to doing ministry. And I will share more there. But God continued to show me how that is part of the body of Christ. He had important work for me to do. And then number eight is kind of the important thing. We want to invest in people. If you take your money and you invest it in something, you want to get a return, right? And so that's what we want to invest in people because people will last for eternity. Our things, our cars, our houses will not last for eternity. So investing in people is the the best investment. So you want to have the opportunity to share the hope that we have because of our relationship with Jesus with others so they can have the same hope and enjoyment of their life. So using that as our background, now I'll go ahead and share a little more of my story. So I grew up as part of a a family business that was started by my grandfather in 1937. So that's a long time ago. And then my father learned the business from him, so second generation. So then my father taught my brothers and I the same business. Uh, Continue to learn. But the business uh, that we did was a drilling company that we uh, provided water for homes, uh, businesses, and farms. Uh, so we, we took those skills and we were able to, to help people. Uh, I learned from an early age uh, to work hard and to do my best. I learned many skills related to the business of how to construct and how to, uh, to work and operate large equipment and how to work with my hands to fix things. <laughs> Um, so our family also had a farming business in addition where we raised cows and pigs and grew crops and corn and soybeans. But I admit to you, when I was a child, I did not always like that I was in a family business because I didn't have a choice if I was going to help or not. Because <laughs> me, my father expected that you are part of the family, this is what you will do. And so I learned how to work hard and be responsible um, and now that I'm older, I see that God was working to use my upbringing for something else. But I did not know that. He, he kept it a secret from me. <laughs> so that was good. So in 2006, I met a man who had just started a ministry in the Central African Republic. Guess what that ministry was? Drilling water, drilling for water, and providing water for those who didn't have any. So I immediately thought, oh, I know something about this. <laughs> and so I learned that God had prepared me to be able to help, help him with his ministry. The important part of this ministry uh, was to provide safe, clean water, but it was also to equip the Central African staff to do the work themselves. So a lot of what I did was provide training and um, information that they could use to improve their own life and to help their own people. And you can also see there that uh, over the last two years, we have started a farming business, growing fruits and vegetables. So trying to meet physical needs of water, and food, but then we also want to share the love of Jesus. So putting those things together. So as you can see there, with the things that God has taught me from this passage, my desire was to use some of the skills I learned to train others to invest 
in other people. So it's fun for me to have many friends. And just like when I come here, I don't speak any Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak their language either. But it's fun to work together and train. Uh, so these gentlemen, these men, helped us construct a barn that is in the background. So we showed them how to do it. I had to learn how to do it. <laughs> but they finished it. We let them finish. And so they were very proud that they had finished some of the work because we had taught them. So that is our desire, is to train and to help them. There's many things that I could share about that, but you all want to go home today, so I will just leave it there. <laughs> the other thing I want to share this morning is you do not have to go to another country to have a good ministry. So for me, another important part of my ministry uh, is to have a ministry to my family. So it has been the goal of Gina and I to have our entire family learn to do the same thing, to develop and use their own skills to serve others and also to learn other cultures. You are a little bit of the beneficiary of that, and you'll see some fun pictures of him. So our first experience was in Morelia, Mexico. We went there to serve an orphanage and church. So as uh, the pictures will scroll through there, you'll see that our whole family was involved. So there's Pastor Nate was uh, playing the guitar in front of a church for the very first time. Tears streaming down his face because he was scared. <laughs> and now he stands up here at your church and, and does a great job. But all of our children, all of our family were involved. You see me standing up there trying to talk again. And... Uh, so our entire family grew from these experiences, and we continued to work with orphans in Mexico, but also expanded to the countries, also Central African Republic, uh, Cambodia, and Thailand. As you heard from Gina last Sunday, you know God has given her the ministry working with children in Thailand. So it was fun to see the investment of what God has given the investment into the people of Central African Republic, but also as a father to invest in my family, in my wife, and my children, to see them grow in their own faith and their willingness to, to serve God. And so another part of family is, as they've grown older, is to be hopefully a godly father and to be a part of their lives and sharing as we usher them into adulthood. So it's been, you know, an also very important part of my personal ministry. So as you can hear, there's, you know, ministry is a lifestyle, right? So you recognize that couple? <laughs> so uh, that is an, another exciting part of, as uh, John shared, the unusual life that we live, our family. And then just for fun, another part of ministry that I just wanted to share is the ministry of fun. Now, you can do that, this one, recreation. So in our home, my wife Gina has an exercise a group that meets in our house, and they enjoy having uh, exercise together and fun. <laughs> so if you do kickboxing, you can come to our house on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and you can punch the bags. So I'm happy that they punch the bags and not me. <laughs> And then for myself, I also play on a softball team. So in America, it's the big ball with, where it's easy to hit. And uh, Here they call it cricket. Cricket? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, opportunity to have fun. I enjoy playing, but it's also a chance for me to encourage other men and to be a Christian when things don't go well, <laughs> when you lose. <laughs> Uh, here is a chance where we actually won, so it, it was great. Um, but so hopefully these things will encourage you with the time that we have here that ministry can be your lifestyle. I've shown you some of my pictures, and I could spend another hour showing you more pictures <laughs> because God has taught me the principle from Romans about making my life 
a living sacrifice. And so that's why I encourage you to do. Think about what are the things you enjoy doing. Your skills are different than mine. And that was when uh, I got excited, was learning that God can use my skills. And I know God can use your skills and your interests and your fun, the things you like to do for fun. He can use that because you can invest in other people. So I hope this gives you a little encouragement and makes you think about what God may have for you.